Hey everybody, it is time for the Kickwits, the show where we highlight awesome crowd-funded projects. Every episode, we interview amazing creators and showcase their work. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and I am joined by my co-host on this Kickwits, Mike Kafis. Hey everybody, how you doing? And we are talking with Cedric. Hello Cedric. everyone. Hey Cedric, what's your last name? Harris. Harris, Cedric Harris, and David. What's up, guys? And David and David Clark, David Clark, right? David Clark, yeah. Yes. So, uh, David Clark and Cedric Harris, they are from Offshoot Comics, and they have a really cool game that they are kickstarting coming up. Uh, neck, what? How? When? When does it start? When are we launching? April twenty second. April 20th. Yep. Okay, so we're coming in a little early on this one. If you're watching this now, or you're watching this, um, if you're watching this on the Kickstarter page or, or anywhere else, uh, it's probably already kicked off, probably already started. Um, but yeah, uh, April 21st. And um, so we want we want to have them on to talk about to give them a chance to talk about the game because you know a Kickstarter page has so much text on it uh, and people get tired of reading all that text they get lost in it uh, they they watch you know they watch the main video and they'll kind of the scrub down through the stuff and look at it and if it looks interesting um, you know they might read a little bit more but people are more inclined to watch videos so that's why we do this so uh, you know tell us about this this is it's called Grid Breakers right and Correct, yeah and where did you where did, what what is this what kind of game is this so this game is something that I've been working on for a, a long time. It started off as being called Heroes of Us uh, uh, Card Battle something. It was, uh, it was a whole thing a long time ago that uh, is a concept that came up with where it was the movement and strategy of chess, but with like the, the fun and the, the deck building of trading card games. Uh, because uh, growing up, I was a Yu-Gi-Oh player. Like, and, wh and when I say Yu-Gi-Oh player, I meant from age 12 when the show came out till like four years ago so <laughs> uh I, I played i played for a while and uh and basically what the game is is you have a board each player gets um three characters um uh, three character pieces that are attached to character cards that tells you your stats you know how you can move your health points your abilities um the characters also have something called a power-up condition which once it's met which is different for every character they can turn over and they're powered up uh, you make your way across the board, you do combat with the other characters, and of course you have your deck of support cards, which uh, essentially allow you to protect your characters, move around, and generally screw over the other opponent. <laughs> yep. Um, yep. But it's an idea that I've been working on for a long time, and the cool thing is, um, if you guys know, we, we also work with uh, Starburns Industries on a book called Oddwell. Well, so Starburns is going to be helping us out by putting out this game under their new games division. So this will be a, a, a co-production between Offshoot and Starburns. So oh, Starburns oh, now has, they have a video production uh, division. They have right. a press, which you guys are under for Oddwell. So, and right. now they're doing a games division. That's yep. correct, yeah. Wow, yeah. okay. Congratulations, man. You guys are in good with them. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you, man. We appreciate it. And you know, it all yeah. stemmed from uh, last year at New York Comic Con. Uh, me and uh, one of the uh, VPs of Starburns were talking about games and stuff, and I said, well, let me take my shot and see if he likes the concept. <laughs> so it's been a lot that's been happening these last few months, but uh, I'm really glad that the game is about to get, you know, its chance to shine. So, yeah. Awesome, awesome. So this is, all right, so this is not a... Um... This is not like a, a chess variant because I know a lot of people they'll they'll say you know you say it's a, you know the, similar to chess in that you have a board and you move pieces across it but it's not a chess variant because you're not using chess pieces you're not using the rules of chess it's only reminiscent of right right and it's it's yeah. only uh, like chess in terms of like the strategy and of course the moving on a board um, but the the rules are entirely different like we have some cards and this one in particular. I meant as a defensive card. It's called Earthwall. Basically, you put the card actually on the board. So you're able to actually change the board and add obstacles and, and put things on the board uh, from your deck. And uh, I actually meant it to be a defensive card, but uh, Cedric in playtesting uh, has turned it into a weapon, uh, it, which it's is pretty a good funny. Weapon. <laughs> but, you know, nice. yeah, it's all, it's all kinds of things. Like we have things called gates that allow you to teleport from different points on the, ma on the map. Um, yeah. So, it, it, if anyone's worried about it being like chess, trust me, the only way it's a, it's involved with chess is the fact that it's a board and there's strategy in how you move. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah. does it 
Does it come with any any like so? Does it come with any pieces? Like, what do you move across the board? Is it does it come with like uh, I don't know uh, tokens or, or are they figures? Right. Or, or what so you got? so uh, the starter set it comes with um, the the starter deck, uh, the Oddwell expansion pack. Um, you get ten character cards and then you get ten character pieces along with it. Um, the best way to describe the pieces is think Pogs. But not pogs. <laughs> okay. I just, so like it's, tokens, yeah. right? Yeah, like, yeah. like, like little, little tokens yeah. that have the characters' faces on it. Okay. And does the board come with the game? Yes, it does. Yes. The board comes with the game. Um, the, well, the instruction booklet will actually be on our website, uh, which is uh, gridbreakerstcg.com. Um, so the, the rule book will be on there. And we'll also have a page for rulings. Because um, uh, if you know anything about Yu-Gi-Oh! Magic players, is that... There's a lot of little technicalities that come up yes. that need specific rulings. Like, right. yeah. what happens when this card meets this card on, like, the third Thursday of, like, the Blood Moon? You know, like, yeah, people right. need to know what the answer is. <laughs> right. Now, is is this, uh, is this a, is this a, uh, a, 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 like, a deck that is... Um, standardized or is it is it like uh like like Yu-Gi-Oh and, and Magic where you can get more cards as time goes on or is it like you buy this kit and that's it you got every card you're going to get or, or uh or will there be more cards out or how, how's that going to play into this so there will definitely be a lot more cards out um so like you know like so they come to the starter deck and the Oddwell expansion and the care and you can make your own deck based on that um but there will be other expansions so um we we're going to be having some guest um, guest stars from other Starburn series, such as Hellicious and B Squad. Um, they'll have characters and support cards from their um, their series. Uh, also, there'll be some other offshoot properties like Heroes of Us um, and Starburn. And then, of course, we've actually gone to other companies outside of Starburn who'll be joining in. Um, our friends yeah. over at Fanbase Press who did um, Penguins Pengu vs. Possums. Um, they actually were nominated for an Eisner last year for their book, Quince. Um They're going to be joining in uh, with our universe as well. So they'll be guest stars from all over the place. Um, and and the, the goal is that all these cards are interchangeable. You'll be able to make your own deck. It, you're not stuck to an archetype. And yep. you don't I, – like, there's more coming. There's always going to be more stuff added and more stuff added. So. Nice. Yep. nice. And you can uh, currently go to uh, Grid Breakers uh, T. Uh, TCG the card Correct. game dot dot yeah. com. You can currently yeah. go there. I'm there now, and I am joining your mailing list. Oh, thank you. I appreciate thank you. it. You're welcome. <laughs> we appreciate and, and that. I'll, I'll tell you. You know what? It is. It's very important if if you're watching this uh, and you're interested in this at all to to join the mailing list for creators because. Uh, it gives them the ability to reach out to you because if you're looking at this, you're like, oh, that is kind of interesting. I don't know. I'm thinking about it, right? If you don't join the mailing list, it's gone. It's, it's gone. You'll you'll never come back to it because there's a million things out there. You should go ahead and join up. You could always, I mean, you could always unsubscribe if you decide that you don't want to do it. But if you don't subscribe now, like right away, right. you'll forget and it'll zip right on past you. And then you'll be like, oh, man, there was this thing I wanted to back. And what was the name of that? Uh, code Breakers, yeah. uh, uh, Ball Breakers, <laughs> uh, a Grid Breakers. Oh, yeah, right. I don't know, right? So, so, so do it do it now. Or, or if you're on the Kickstarter page, if, if you're on the Kickstarter page and you're watching this now and you're like, hmm, don't forget to hit the Remind Me button. You can always just not do it if you don't want to. You're not committing to anything. But if you do that, you'll stand a chance at, uh, of actually backing it uh, if you do decide that you want to do it. Speaking right, of backing you. it, speaking of backing it, uh, could you give me a little information about that? Because like I've got my money, I'm ready to, I'm ready to feed it through the camera. I want to okay. just give it to you, give it to you <laughs> so, now. Ced Cedric is a. Uh is our, our, our master in charge of the Kickstarter. Uh, so he'll take this part. Um, yeah, just a humble title, master of the Kickstarter. Um, <laughs> That's right. Sergeant at uh, Arms. Yeah, right. <laughs> we're, we're trying to keep it simple, you know, get people into the game and also some extra tidbits because of what we can get. The first tier is just, you know, thank you for supporting us like a dollar or up. Um, the $35 tier, it gets you the Grid Breakers game. It gets you the Oddwell expansion deck, uh, all the character pieces, the board, um, and an exclusive uh, card, Catwell. That, like, um, if you uh, if you know our book, Oddwell, it's the character Oddwell, but in cat form. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. He's got cat yeah. ears. It makes him an entirely different character. <laughs> oh, neat. Okay. Nice. Hey, so, um, so and we have... 
we have somebody in the chat room. Just real quick, I'm sorry. We have somebody in the chat room. They were asking real quick about the the pieces. So they're 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 going to be like coins, right? They're not 3D stand up. Just making sure. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, our goal is to eventually uh, have like special editions that will be you know 3D printed characters. Uh, mm -hmm. But in order to keep uh, the cost good for people to want to buy the game now we want to keep it you know as, as easy as possible totally understand yes. that you know what and that that is actually a really good idea because if you're doing a kickstarter and you've never done figures before that's its own beast altogether i yes. warn people about that all the time because you know we do yeah. where i work we do 3d printing and stuff like that and, and we've made figures there for certain things and it it's its own thing so that's good that's actually right. it's great that you're just doing coin or like the coin style or the chip style because that, that's actually better it's just more you lead you to be more successful so i'm sorry right. Cedric. go ahead go ahead with where you where oh no going. no go yeah no, that was awesome um but then we're also having a tier where uh we're limiting it to five but you can create a card so you can work with david and our artist on creating your own personal card that is playable in game um, so if the tournaments or you're playing with friends, you can use your card, um, like a regular old card and it's your own personal flavor on it too. Um, and that's just, uh, 500. Um, we also have, uh, you're speaking of figures. Um, if you follow us on social media, grid breakers, TCG on Facebook or Instagram, you've seen pictures of a statue. Um, and that's, uh, one of the tiers we're doing where you get the game the expansion deck, the card, and the statue, or the figure, oh, cool. um, for fifteen hundred. We're limiting that to ten because, like you were talking about, figures are difficult <laughs> as we're learning. <laughs> um, so, but I, it's I, if you've seen the pictures of it, it looks even better in person. I I can't even like go into how beautiful <laughs> it was when I saw it at WonderCon. I may have um, cried. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. It's, it is. You get that feeling when you've created something and you get it and it's beautiful and you have it in your hand and it's just like it's overwhelming. I made that, you know. It's that. That's a yeah. really good feeling. Right. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And then um, uh, there's one more tier, correct, Cedric? Yeah. And then for fifteen hundred, uh, not including flight or stay, uh, we're doing uh, tours of Starburn Studios. So you get the game, and then you also get to tour the studio where Anomalisa, um, Rick and Morty. Uh, Frankenhole, a bunch of other great TV shows ha and animated shows have been worked on. Oh, wow. So, so Mike, you're going to uh, dig deep on that one, huh? It's tempting. <laughs> Rick and Morty. Oh, I didn't hear I didn't, oh, I, oh, I didn't, uh, I didn't, I didn't hear an amount on that. Uh, how much was that? That was uh, as a 15, 1500 there, 1500. Uh, Morty. <laughs> uh. Yep. Oh jeez! <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but that's cool. That that's a really cool opportunity if somebody can afford to do that. I mean, because yeah. you know you get to go yeah. see where all the magic's made, and that I, that's that's crazy awesome. So uh, yeah, I, do you have I any... still trip out. Yeah. yeah. Was that? I was saying, I still trip out when I go when we have meetings there, and you know they have stuff they worked on the wall. I still fanboy out. I'm like, oh my goodness, that's the werewolf from Freaking Hole, oh, and no, oh, from this thing. Um, so yeah, even I still fanboy out. That's yeah. awesome. So do you have, are there any stretch goals? Yes, actually, um, we're trying to do stretch goals, uh, through interaction though. So, so we'll unlock them as we get progressively more followers on Facebook, Instagram, or, um, if we've fully completed getting funded and beyond. Um, the first stretch goal is we'll be releasing a ninja deck which the Rainbow Ninjas are a character from Oddwell, and they all get their own deck. Um, Can I explain so... the ninjas real quick? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so the ninjas are a kind of archetype that I really loved experimenting with. Um, and just so you guys know, all the packs that we're talking about, these packs are already done. Characters, like it's, yeah. All we got to do is hit print, and they're, and they're good to go. Uh, but the ninjas, so what they are in the Oddwell world is that there are drops of paint that come from rainbows and they form into ninjas as they fall, and they're always very angry. Uh, and each color has its own different ability. You know, so like fire, or sorry, like uh, the red ones are really fast and have fire abilities. Green is, you know, healing and earth type abilities. But the cool thing is, so you have the basic colors, um, and they don't have an, another side to flip to. But what they can do is they can fuse with other colored ninjas to create secondary 
And then from secondary colors, they can go to tertiary colors. And so they don't work like anybody else. They're, they're the only characters right now that basically do the fusion dance every few seconds <laughs> to make new ninjas. So yeah. I, I have a lot of fun with them, and I really, really can't wait to see them get out. <laughs> oh, my God. That's awesome. So, like, <laughs> like, so just give me an example. So I got, I got um, I'm picturing the fire and water get together. Do you get steam out of that? Or you get, how, how does it so, work? So it, it, uh, it, it, I, I base their fusions off of, like, um, like, like, like the color wheel and everything. So if you have, like, a red and a blue ninja that you fuse together, you get a purple ninja. Uh, and the purple ninja uh, is, 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 is not that great. He only controls gravity. So, <laughs> oh, that's you know, that's you know, it? small things. That's it. Yeah, that's it. I, I thought he was going to turn into Samuel L. Jackson, you know, because he had the purple lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> Super awesome. Um, oh, that's yeah, that's cool. the Ninja Deck, and I'm, I'm really excited about it because I, I really love the fusion mechanic um, that they have. It's really cool. Okay. Yes. Oh, wow. All right. All right. And, can, can, can you do me a favor? Like, um, uh, David, why don't you run through and uh, – say like um if we had our decks and we had our board now is this board actually a um a grid or is it more of like a Yu-Gi-Oh type of thing where you can place your cards and place some pieces and things first of all it it, it is a grid it is a okay. 20 by 20 board um and you know you 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 move on along the squares uh, like i said forward back left or right not diagonal yet um okay. but yeah it is a grid though so Pete and I are sitting on both sides of the grid. Um, walk us through. Tell us, like, as if we had things. Tell us then that this is how we would do it. We would deal out a card or a, how many cards. And, yeah, yeah. And okay. Then, like, how many cards? So we'll basically, do we start with cards? Do we pull cards as we play? How does, how does that all work? Right. So you would each uh, start with three characters, um, and you would take your pieces representing each character, and you'd place them anywhere on your back row. What your back row is is the, is the, is the row closest to you. Sure. Um, you can start it anywhere that you want on there. Um, I, I would advise not clumping them together because that's a good way to get killed. Um, <laughs> and you would each start with five cards in your hand, and whoever goes first, which we leave up to you guys how you guys want to decide how to start that. If you want to do a, a, a coin toss or rock, paper, scissors, up to you guys. Um, the person who goes first, they draw a card, and then you would start your turn, which be, means you can you can move a character, um, chess rules apply though. Once your hand comes off that piece, that character's there. There's no taking that move back. Right. Um, and one and once you've moved, you can you can either use some support cards or you can at, or you can attack your character. Or your no, no, hold on, hold on. Now you're going ahead. We have our three character cards. Uh, <laughs> where where are these uh, support cards? Have they have they been dealt to us as well? Well, right. So so you start with five cards in your hand from your deck. Five. Okay. Right. And then whoever goes first will draw one card, uh, and and then you, you draw a card every every time it's your turn. And then discard at the end. You actually don't have to discard at all. You keep no. you keep cards in your hand until you use them, or until you're required to discard due to another card effect. So okay. a person can end up hoarding a lot of cards if they don't use any. You can. Yeah. Uh, it just means you're probably going to lose. Uh, you got you've got to. This game is designed for you to have to use your cards. Like we and we like we done a lot of playtesting. We had one game actually that went for an hour and a half between Cedric yeah. and one of our friends in Vegas, and I can tell you, not one of them was hoarding cards. It just right. they kept no, blowing no. through the, the 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 deck over and over again uh, over that course of the the hour and a half. Right, because you got because you got to do you're doing stuff with the cards. So if I have cards right. and I'm holding on to, I'm not I'm not using them. I'm not doing stuff to the other person, and they're doing stuff to me every round, right? Right, and you're also yeah. not limited to how many uh, support cards you can use a turn. You can use as many as you can satisfy the requirements of. Um, and there's two kinds of support cards. You have the regular kind, which uh, has nothing in the top left corner. That means you can play that at any time on your turn or your opponent's turn. But yeah. then there are others which are more specialized that have a little clock symbol in the top left. Those you could only use on your turn because they'd be really broken if they could be used at any point. <laughs> right. All right. So as we're strolling through we're, uh, on, on our video, we, we see like right now I'm looking at it and maybe a little bit delayed, but we're looking at Mayor Bear. Uh, and that's a one over a seven, for instance. Yeah. Um, that one yeah. would be the ones that you were saying that um, is that a, that's a character? Yeah, that's a, that's a character is, card. Yeah. So the top number okay. is how many uh, uh, squares he can move per turn. The bottom number is his health. 
Okay. Okay. So he is a he is a very slow character. Right. Yeah. So how do you how yeah. do you keep track of health? Do you, is that something you have to write down? No, actually. Uh, so the way we do this, and this is going to really hurt, uh, is every time you take damage, you you take cards from the top of your deck, and you place those. Uh, under the character that was damaged. So if I was to attack your character for five damage, five cards from the top of your deck are now under that character, which means when that character dies, all those cards go with it. Now, oh. when you heal, when you heal, those cards go back to your deck. But this way, if you lose a monster, it, it, if, if they have eight life points, for example, and that monster dies, you lost that monster plus eight other cards. Oh, yeah. my God. God, Dick, that Ooh, is clever. That hurts. That is that so hurts. clever. No, that is that is fantastic. <laughs> I love that. No, that is a very clever game mechanic. I, that is yeah. Sweet. And the cool thing is, we we actually have some cards that are designed to. Uh, so th those are called damage cards. We have some cards that are actually designed to have effects click once they've gone to the graveyard as a damage card. Yeah. Oh, you, so, you see, so, see, I know that that's some Yu-Gi-Oh sneaky. Yeah, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's Listen, that's my Yu-Gi-Oh lineage showing. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything, but I was a uh, I was quite the Yu-Gi-Oh player with my son oh, as okay. when he was growing up. I uh, yes, yeah, I had quite the collection. That. Oh yeah, I'm just very saying, much. At my school, I was king of games, so <laughs> I was I was I was in it. <laughs> so so could you have? I mean, like, could you have like a, a monster that was like a vampire that could like steal people's cards like from underneath their thing? Yeah, we, we have characters that they, they, they yeah. can take cards. We have characters um, that actually can use cards that are in your... Uh, so the, the graveyard for us is called the KO pile. We have characters that actually can use cards in the KO pile on, on their own KO pile or their opponent's KO pile. Um, speaking of vampires, we have a character that was an exclusive um, from Hellicious. Um, uh, her, like, she's a healer, but she heals by siphoning. So she damages you while healing one of her own characters. Um so yeah, like the, the the game, the, the possibilities for this thing is are are, are endless. Yeah. So okay. it it sounds like you are running a commoditized card game. So the cards themselves are a commodity as much as the information on them. Right. Yes. Okay. That is that is clever. So so this, <laughs> so this sounds like a very simple game. It sounds like a game that like 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 Yu Gi Oh is something that you could play with if you had. Yeah, you know, like a ten-year-old kid. Like, what? What is the? So, what is the age range? What is your? What is your target age range? So, our 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 target, like for competitive, is going to be like fourteen and up. Uh, but what we've actually found in real-world testing is that we've had kids as young as six play and understand this game. Um, yeah. which is which is really cool. When I first debuted it years ago, and it was cool, we actually got an article written about us in um, the Orange County Register about this. Uh, we, we, we debuted the very early version of this game, and I had a four-year-old kid playing with his older brothers for four hours mm. to the point where his parents were like, we want to go home. And I'm like, <laughs> I agree with you. But they're, <laughs> but they're having a lot of fun right now. So, it, you know, there, there's really no, you know, hard age range on who's going to actually be able to enjoy the game. But uh, we will be aiming more towards the people who are like, you know, competitive card game players, which is normally like the 13, 14 and up crowd. Wow. Oh, very cool. Very cool. It really right. sounds like you guys have done your homework. Yeah. A you know, bit. a lot of it just comes from being about that life you know about that trading card game life you know <laughs> yeah and, and, and you know what I, I gotta i gotta hand so for anyone who's watching this and like you know uh, mike and i are in our studios and um david is in his car but this is how dedicated he is because because we said hey look you know he's got some issues that he can't be on his computer at home right this minute um but he's got a lot of traveling coming up, a lot of stuff to do. And he's like, man, if I don't do it now, I can't do it. I was like, well, we're going to do it then. We're going to we're gonna go. But that's how dedicated he is to this. And like you said, the game is finished, right? It's all done. This is just the, the game send is it done. to the printers. So yep. anybody who has any trepidations about, oh, well, if I back this Kickstarter, you know, I don't know if they're going to. No, it's done. It's done. It's done. Great. Right. We actually right debuted it. We debuted it a couple weeks ago, actually, at WonderCon. Uh, so yeah. what, we'll, we'll be throwing some footage of people playing the game. There's already some images online of people playing it. Um, but the game has been debuted. It has been tested already. Uh, we took it to uh, ARG, which was a trading card game tournament a few months ago in Vegas. Um, it yeah. already exists. Right now, all yeah. we need is the, the funding uh, to get it printed. We actually have a printer. We're going with a company called uh, Grand Prix International. They're the company that uh, prints for um, Steve Jackson games, like the Munchkins and stuff. Yeah. Um, so we have them. We're dealing with a uh, backer kit, which also works with, with Grand Prix International. So they're very professional. 
top tier printers. They're going to, they're going to handle fulfillment as well. So basically yes. once the money goes to Kickstarter, we send it to them. They have all the info and they professionally will, ha uh, will get it to every single person who orders. So yeah. you don't have to worry about us not being able to get it out in the shipping. It's going to go right yeah. from the factory to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Cause that is, that is the, the, so there's like three there's like three major pieces to you. I've done a Kickstarter before. I'm getting ready to do another. I'm getting ready to launch one in June. Um, so okay. there are three there are three awesome. Kickstarter tier like three not tiers. The three Kickstarter components that are really really um, important and they're like different skill sets. Okay, like like if you do the whole Kickstarter yourself, you literally have to be three different kinds of people. So there's the creator who creates the game. That's stage one. Stage two is production. So getting it made, getting it made for the right price so that you're not, you're not losing money and the consumer is getting something that's worth their money uh, and, and, and getting your product in. And then there's fulfillment, which is getting everything to everybody at a cost-effective price point so that they're not overpaying for shipping and you're not getting killed and it's ruining your project because you, you know, it's like, oh, I did all this work and I got all this bag, but I didn't make anything because I lost my butt in shipping, right? Or the yeah, stuff doesn't right. get shipped properly or people mm -hmm. get their stuff and it's damaged and it, they don't get taken care of, right? And those are all things that people worry about when they back a Kickstarter. But like you're saying, you've got, you know, you've got three different, groups doing three different things and they're all good at the thing that they do so that's right exactly. right direction perfect direction yeah we want to make sure that that that, that didn't kill us uh the yes. only thing that we're shipping is the odd wheel figure and i'm pretty sure like i mean there's like five degrees between me cedric and walter but i'm pretty sure we can handle shipping 10 figures yeah, I think I, yeah. If, yeah. if we can't do that i think we've made a grievous error <laughs> yeah, yeah, by the way, I just wanted to say uh, big ups. Uh, Black Superman is in the chat room right now saying he's sorry he couldn't be here. Oh, he's, what's uh, up? Nursing hey. his, little, his little throat there. Got, look, got a little sore Oh, throat. all right. We got to give a shout out uh, to Black Superman's daughter, actually. He just got back from New York. Um, yeah. His yeah. middle daughter just performed at Carnegie Hall. Nice. Uh, yeah. So wow. he, he wasn't at WonderCon because he was at Carnegie Hall watching his daughter sing. So right. got to yeah. give him big props for that. So yeah, that, that was really cool. That was the most important thing right there. That's more important than anything else yeah. he could have been doing. Yes, it is. Sure. He, came, yeah. he came all the way to the East Coast, and he didn't even drop down, you know, 400, <laughs> you know, a couple hundred miles to see us. Come on, yeah. man. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll, I'll, I'll be out there eventually. With all the traveling I do, I'll come see you guys. <laughs> uh, you, okay. you have to. Now, <clears throat> I just want to say one thing. It really does sound like you guys have done all your homework. You have crossed every T, dotted every I. You just made one small mistake. Hmm. You in game testing, you missed a great opportunity because uh, Pete and I, to some extent, are game designers, and you know we would have loved to have helped you guys game uh, play test this. Really? Yeah. yeah. So just so, for the future, oh. and if yeah. you want to run okay. by us, yeah, I, I, I'm the, I work for TSR Games, which has relaunched, has, has become a new thing again. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I do, I do a bunch of game design, and I've been do doing it for years. And like I said, I got a Kickstarter coming out to game. Um, okay. And my last one was a game, so uh, so yeah, absolutely. So next okay. next time you do one, the next thing you do, run it by me. I, I, not that I could do it any better than you, Mike is is, right. uh, Mike is Mike is being generous here, but not that I could do it any better than you. But it's always good to have a second set of eyes, and, yeah. and we're yeah. sure. I'd just be happy anytime. I'd be happy to help you out. Well, you know, so the cool thing with the game is that we're you know we're adding lots of different mechanics and stuff, and I'm working on one system right now called a tarot system based on a new creator who's bringing her her stuff in. And it's like it has to do with like magic artists. So I'm coming up with new mechanics for how it's going to interact with the board. So uh, you know, offline, I'd love to talk to you about sure. that. Like, you know, hey, this is because like because the cool thing is, and also the the terrible thing is, the more things we add, the more of a delicate balancing act is going to be with yes. in terms of making sure that there's not one type that reigns supreme. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. you got to watch yeah. what, what I like to call the downstream effect. You know, it's like, right. oh, I'd like to add this thing, but what is that going? How is that going yeah. to change everything else? If this person brings right. this card in, um, how's this going to affect other people playing the game with their cards? They're going to be like, oh man, that's that's BS, man. That card <laughs> like totally nerfs everything that we do. Or or the person right. playing it, and they're like, man, I, I don't like we, these cards. I play. We had a couple like, characters. Watched. We we had a couple characters in playtesting that when I was designing them, I was like, well, clearly these would never get abused. And then when we put the game out in the wild, I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no, I was horribly wrong. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh, yeah. if, 
Yeah. If it can be abused, it will it be will abused. Be. Yes. It will be. And yeah. you've heard of rules lawyers, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I live I live with a lawyer. So she plays oh. games like a lawyer. She she oh. will find the holes in the oh, rules. Yeah. I'm not hey, Mike, we, I'm not inviting her to any of our games. <laughs> <laughs> we we actually had that when we went to uh to ARG in Vegas, you know, we had some Yu-Gi-Oh players that 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 played the game for about an hour and and I, I, I was so glad that I, I had my Yu-Gi-Oh experience because I already knew the loopholes. Like, they were arguing. They're like, well, see, I played this, and, and this was in response to this, and it countered this. So mm -hmm. I was like, oh. I, like, I mean, Cedric, you, you remember how they they were coming up with the rulings before yeah. we even told them what they were. And I, yeah. I just I, – I loved seeing that, that other people look at the game and, and take that enjoyment out of it. I love seeing that. But they were coming <laughs> up with it correctly. They were, and they, they were the correct rulings. I was like, "How?" Wow. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> really good. Really good. Because, yeah, you know, it's game. You know, game theory. It's the way it works. You know, the uh, games just they, they, they like the rules come out of them naturally. They come out of them organically. It is this right. way because it has to be this way. And like right. you would interpret it the same way I would because it's just really honestly, there's no other way to interpret it. It's the way you know. It's it's the way it is. Right. I'll tell you, you know, what's interesting. Like you said, you, you take this stuff on playtesting. Uh, the project I'm working on, I took to a, a convention like two years ago. So I've been working on mine for a couple of years. Uh, I went to Metatopia, which is a gaming convention on the East Coast. And it's a gaming convention for game designers. So that's all it's really for. So when you go there, you don't go there to play games that are finished. You go there to play games that are not finished. And it's all structured around feedback between um, game designers and players. And a lot of game designers go there just to play other game designers' games and help them uh, finalize and, and fix their games. And they actually do, like, two-hour slots. So normally a gaming convention is, like, four-hour slots. These are all two-hour slots because... It's not supposed to be a complete long strung, strung out game, and it was really cool. Get like you're saying, it was really cool getting that feedback from people and listening and just writing notes down, not not arguing with them, not fight. You know, just right. like, oh, okay, yep, mm -hmm, I'm gonna write that down, right? And it's like maybe I won't use it later, maybe I will, but you know, it, it was really cool to get their ideas because I would I would never have seen that being the designer themselves, right. Yeah, 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 definitely. Like, 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 like I was telling you with Cedric with him using Earthwall. I was like, this is clearly going to be used just for defense. No, this dude <laughs> in one game used it to. to so basically, the, what, what, what the Earthwall is, is it, it summons like a, an actual wall on the field that covers up to four spaces, and he had multiple of those cards, so he basically just walled people in. Yeah. So that he, oh. they couldn't move, and then he yeah. just. He put them in a little. Uh, he, he basically he put the fish in a barrel and yes. then just shot at them, and I was just like, "That was meant to protect people." <laughs> oh, it was protecting them. Protecting them. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah. Yeah. Protect them from living, I guess. But uh, yes. yeah, I I really loved love seeing that. Like you know, like th there's how I designed the cards and how I intended them, but then there's how they're actually used. And that but was come on, cool that. you you have to admit. But playing a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh, there are a lot of cards that you know that they designed and you said, oh, no, no, because I have a <laughs> deck that I use this way. I'm going to use this card to right. do what they didn't even intend it for. So, like all yeah. the infinite loops, the first turn kills, stuff yeah. that they're like, oh, no, what have we done? <laughs> uh -huh. and, and you know what? I'm sure uh, when this thing gets gets popular, you're going to have to start redacting uh, a couple of uh, rules and um, just, just modifying some things and saying, oh, oh this yeah. card's no longer, this is, <laughs> the wall is, tear down that wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, there know. are already some characters who I know who are going to have to get touched real early on in this game. Because uh, yeah. they're, they're a little too, like, one of the characters that we use is a guy named Todd the Terrible Dragon. But I, 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 this is, this is Cedric's, this is his go-to and and I, I've 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 noticed every game he doesn't have this character, it's a struggle. But when he has this character, he just steamrolls everyone. <laughs> oh. And I know if he can do it, yeah. there's gonna be at least, you know, ten, twenty percent of other people out there who play who are gonna be able to abuse the character the same way. Well, <laughs> yeah. Until you go to main print, you always have that edit. Yeah. 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 It's true. Oh, yeah. It's sometimes you may, you may have to nerf it. Sometimes no. Oh, sometimes it's, it's it's just one minor little tweak that you can do that fixes whatever whatever thing you got going on. Uh, right. Sometimes it, you like you just change one number or just change one aspect or 
or something along those lines, and it totally fixes it. And you'll get that from somebody else. You'll get that from a player that you play tested with. They'll say, hey, you know, he seems kind of powerful, but, like, if you just did this, and you're like, oh, shit, why did I see that? I didn't see that. Right. Perfect. That's genius. Right? Yeah. Yep. No, we got um, a lot of feedback, especially uh, uh, over WonderCon. Um, since, you know, I mean, you know, WonderCon yeah. was a sold-out convention. We got people coming by our table that were playing it. They had input, and we got a lot of really good um, – uh, thoughts and opinions on that and of course I, I got all my friends who were there who who I knew were about that Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic Life like hey play this game and I need you to examine it like you would you know during a tournament you know yeah. right. and yes. and uh, they they're pointing out a lot of those things um, and the cool thing is a lot of those things we had already thought to change but it was really nice to hear it confirmed by yes. someone outside yeah. of my head yeah. <laughs> absolutely so, you know, one thing we haven't talked about, what comes, and we probably should wrap this up soon, what comes with the, the set? Like, how many cards do you get, and what kind of box does it come in? Okay. And, like, is it going to come in a big so, box, and like a little box, and a board, and a, what, all, what, what are you getting? Actually, I have the uh, the white sample here. Oh, sweet. Okay. Uh, sweet. So, you'll get a box like this. Okay. Uh, it's a 10 and a half by 10 and a half box. Yep. Uh, and inside the box, there will be a, uh, a 20 by 20 board. It's a quad fold. Um, yep. uh, there'll be the uh, there'll be two two decks uh, of 40 cards each. Um, the Oddworld yep. deck and or the Oddworld expansion deck, and then uh, the starter deck. And then you also have 10 character cards. Um, the character cards are split in between both the the Grid Breaker starter deck and the Oddworld deck. So you have four Oddworld characters four grid breakers characters and then there's two other kinds of characters that um live in the deck so they're called phantom fourths so because you only have three characters um if you have something else, you really can't summon a fourth character but what a phantom fourth is is it's a character that's one-sided and you can summon them for three turns um and yeah. they can and they, they can help you out in different ways so the ones you'll be getting in the starter pack you'll get one from oddwell called the obsidian it's a, it's a gigantic obsidian rock giant. And, yeah. his, you know, he's, uh, he's a big beefy tank who can, you know, he, he's got some range on him because he just throws rocks at people. Um, then the Grid Breakers deck comes with a character called Sister Stone. Um, and what her ability is, is if she's in the same uh, lane or row as somebody, uh, she can turn them into stone uh, called Stone Sight. Uh, and the cool thing is with her is you can break, you can get away from that if you break her line of sight. So if you like summon a barrier, or if you move another character in front, you can do that and break your line of sight. Um, but the, like the a wall, part of maybe? Her, huh? Like a wall, maybe? Yeah, yeah. like a wall, yeah. like Cedric's yeah. wall. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, yeah, and, and see, the Phantom Force can only stay on the field for three turns. After three turns, they're they're gone, regardless of what's happened to them. Uh, so like with Sister Stone, for example, if she has somebody in Stone's sight. When she dies, her secondary ability, Shatterstone, comes in. And when she dies, so does that character. <laughs> oh. So, so those are Phantom Forts. Those are the last two to complete the ten characters that come in the set. Okay, cool. Yeah, and it's also pretty cool because um, in an in expansion coming up uh, soon, uh, there'll be characters that can make Phantom Force permanent. So yes. you can go, you know, get be super... Uh, powered up and have four characters with an expansion and then have to deal with that. So that that's a cool aspect that's coming soon. And and what do you like what do you see the expansions as? Are they going to be other 40 card decks or what how do you how do you see them? So uh our expansions are actually going to be 50 cards. Um you're going to get uh, a selection of characters from multiple series. Um, and then support cards from multiple series. Um, so, like, the ninjas are going to be an exception. They're going to be their own entire deck. Because they're a specialized way of playing, they do require mm -hmm. an entire deck to support them. You can modify the deck later, but there are a set of core cards, and we found out the hard way through playtesting, that they have to have certain cards to support them because their style is so unique. But for the other types of characters, you'll get, like, Hellicious, B-Squad, Penguins versus Possums in one expansion pack. You'll, you'll, you'll get a character here, a character there, and then some some support cards. You know, no. um, and eventually we'll we'll do like expansion packs where it's featuring one comic specifically. Um, but for right now, it's going to be featuring several comics. That way, you get uh, a taste of what all the worlds have to offer. Two questions: one, you're not going to be selling these cards like Yu-Gi-Oh cards, right? Where we're going to have to buy like five thousand packs in order to get what we want. 
<laughs> no, no, they'll they'll be coming in predefined packs uh, that you'll just have yeah. to buy to to make your deck. I I want people more focused on building their decks and having fun, not so much on the aftermarket trying to get cards. Um, the last deck I built for Yu-Gi-Oh was X Sabers. I spent a thousand dollars when it was all said and done collecting the cards I needed, and I don't want to do it to anybody because when the more that game became about money, the less I played. And now I don't play it at all. Oh, second question. Okay, go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. Second question. Will there be a Rick and Morty expansion pack? Oh. Okay. Oh. So, the million, million dollar, question. dollar question. Okay. So that was literally like the first question I asked when they said we want to do grid breakers was, great. How do I get Rick and Morty? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, the, the way that works, um, you know, I, I'll go to all the specifics. But basically, uh, the better this Kickstarter does, the more serious Warner Brothers, who owns Cartoon Network, will take us. Because remember, while they do make Rick and Morty, they do have to deal with the fact that Cartoon Network has a say as well. Yes, um, licensing. Yeah. Right. So yeah. the better, and I'm not saying this is why everyone listening should be donating, but the more we, <laughs> the better we do with the Kickstarter, the higher likelihood of us getting a Rick and Morty uh, expansion pack eventually. So we can't say yeah. a stretch goal will be that, but there's a good chance that if this thing busts a million dollars, hey, I mean, there's a real good chance. Yeah. I'm just saying. I mean, I mean, for for Starburns, Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland are, are literally just a text message away. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. yeah Come on, people. Remember, just for that alone, man. Come on. You you have cards in your mind already, right? Oh, oh no. I have I have I have a Me Seeks deck. Already planned. Me six, okay. Yes. I have a, I have, I have, I have a Morty deck that I want to do. Um, I want to do a real flea seeks box because I know they mentioned it and it was a joke, but I have an idea for flea <laughs> seeks. So, oh yeah, best believe I'm ready to go as soon as we All say right. it. As soon as they say yes. All right, Pete. I'm yeah, sorry. I was yeah. I was fangirling a little bit. No, no, no. Uh, no go it's, ahead. It's, it's perfect. That was a great question. That was actually a super good question. No, what I was gonna say was is that that uh, I was gonna comment on on the, the the card collecting aspect that you know where you have to buy, you have to you have to pay to play kind of set up with like Magic and you get all all these card games. That's why I've never played any of them. I have never played a single game of of Magic or Yu Gi Oh or any of those ones where the more cards you have, the better you can do, or the, or the more likely right. you are to build a better deck. Because I, from the very early days, I remember when Magic came out. I I was I was right there in the beginning of all that, and I was like, I looked at it, and I was like, wait a minute. So when I buy a pack, I don't know what I'm getting. So I just got to keep buying packs to hopefully get the cards. I I was like, ah, nope, that's a, it's a money scheme. I ain't playing that. Right. right. So I yeah. just didn't get into it. Uh, yeah. And and I, I want people to be able to go, hey, you know, I really like Hellicious. I really like Oddwell. I want to mm -hmm. make the best Oddwell deck. There's certain cards I want. Okay, that comes in the B-Squad deck. I'm going to go buy the B-Squad deck as many times as I need to get the number I need. I'm going to build my deck and now spend my time worrying about playing yes. rather than trying to find the right yes. thing out of a blind pack. Yes, I love it. I love it. That's. I think honestly, that's, I mean, if you ask me, that would be the way I would say, "Let's do it." So that's cool, <laughs> fantastic. All right, so I, I, we're we're coming up on where are we at? We're about forty five minutes here. Let's wrap this up. I mean, this is you know, yeah. We I think we've said just about everything we need to say. Is there anything you guys want to add to this that we that we didn't say or cover or whatever? Um, no, just that. Uh, please, uh, you know, you can check us out on GridbreakersTCG.com. We're still building the site, but it's mostly up. Um, but definitely follow us on social media at GridbreakersTCG on Instagram and Facebook. Um, that's where we're the most active. Sweet, sweet. Yeah. And and if you're if you if you're looking at the Kickstarter page right now and you're watching this, dude, just buy into the cheapest version. You're gonna get if nothing else. You're you're gonna get a, a, a cool game. Sounds like a lot of fun. Um, you know, it's it's not. Uh, it, it's not like a big chance. You're not taking a chance on, oh, well, if I back this, will I get whatever? You're going to get it because they've right. already finished the game. They know what they're doing. Yeah. They've got everybody yeah. in line. They've got all their ducks in a row. It, it's going to happen. You're going to get it, and it's going to be on time, right? Right. Yeah. It's going to be so, on time for sure. We have professionals that, that, that we're dealing with. It's for sure going to happen. Yep. Launching yeah. when? Uh, the, it'll be on April 22nd is when the, yeah. uh, the Kickstarter starts, and then okay. – Right when it finishes, uh, about a month after that is when people should start getting their games. Yeah, man, I'm on it. I am on it. Yeah. 
Right. Right. And it, hey, guys, thank being, you guys. Really appreciate it. Hey, did you say this is being made? Uh, who, who's making this again? Uh, Grand Prix uh, International? A, a company called, yeah, there you go. Yeah, Grand Prix International. And where are they based out of? Uh, they're based in the Midwest, and then they have a factory in uh, in China. Uh, okay. But, you know, like you can walk into most game, uh, car stores and look at Munchkins. Um, uh, they, they print for Steve Jackson games. So yeah. they okay. have a good track record. Right. So, yeah. But, but they're, they're not like just some fly-by-night company. They're, they're established no. in, in country. They are an established their... company. You can look Fantastic. them up. Hey, yeah. if you're in America and you're back in this, you're you're paying American workers, so it's not you're not just sending your money out of the country. So just I mean that's <laughs> for some people that's important. I, I like yeah. the sound of yeah. it. Sure. All right, cool. All right, let's wrap this up then. All right, everybody, make sure you you check out uh, check out Grid Breakers. It's it's gonna be a good, it's gonna be an awesome game. I just know it. I'm looking at the cards, talking to these guys, and we've we've talked to you guys many times, and these are quality folks. They put out quality products. Yeah. So yep. you're not going to be disappointed, trust me. I mean, go check out Oddwell um, from Starburns uh, Press, and uh, you will not you will not be disappointed. Uh, you know what? I got to tell you something. Uh, as in a quick aside, I, I've called my comic shop three times. I keep trying to get them to to like start carrying it, and he's even ordered them. And he keeps telling me, "Oh, I'm not getting them. I'm not. You know, or, or I'm supposed to be getting them in." I, I've called him so many times, like. It, that's got to be a good thing in a way because you guys are. I think the first printing is sold out, right? Yeah, of first the printing first... sold out. Um, yeah. yeah, the trade paperback has just come out, so you you, you yeah. can get it on on Amazon. Um, and then starting this week, uh, uh Barnes and Noble will, will, will be carrying it. Um, but yeah, the, the the book is out and it's available. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Sounds awesome. good. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming on and back this. You know you want to. So let's wrap this up, everybody. Okay, here we go. You've just enjoyed the Kickwits. Make sure to catch our regular live show, uh, The Mythwits, on Facebook, Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. You can ask us or our guests questions or just banter with the other Mythfits. If you miss our live show, you can always catch the Encore episode on Facebook or YouTube. And these guys from Offshoot, they come on regularly. You'll see them again. They'll be back on. Find us yeah. on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter as Mythwits, and check out Mythwits.com. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher. And like I was telling Mike, we got a lot of podcast listeners. Big big audience. I'm, and I thank you, podcast listener who's listening to this right now. Do like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate, and make sure to share your favorite episode on social media and help spread Mythwits love over the entire planet. Uh, Mythwits is part of the TSR Podcast Network. Check out TSRPN.com for more cool shows. Uh, Mythwits is a creative. Oh god, this thing's so long. It's a creative comms product. <laughs> like it, share it in all the places. Just don't edit, don't sell it, and don't stir it. It's build a wall a around it. Yeah, build a wall around it. Yeah, don't build a wall around it. Uh, make sure to check out aetherforge.com for more cool stuff. Thanks everybody for checking this out. And if you're actually watching these credits right now, then don't kid yourself. You want this thing? Go back this puppy right this minute.